Welcome everybody to another edition of the Hurry Up. I'm your host, Adam. Let's get into this. So, a lot has gone on in the NFL, you know, uh, this week. So I'd like to touch on a few things. One, we'll start with the quick, the Giants. Um, they're on their bye week, so nothing really happened. Although there is speculation that they might get Odell Beckham Jr. Fine. Get Odell Beckham Jr. I have no real problems with it. I mean, there are, I have some reservations about a guy coming off of, uh, two ACLs. In, in less than a year's time, I don't know how how fast he'll help. Those are some of my reservations to it. I heard somebody tell me like, "Oh, you're a loser because you want to be a loser organization because you don't want to bring in Odell Beckham Jr." No, I don't want to waste the little cap money that we have on a guy that may come in here and not be fully ready football wise to help out. That's all. That's it. Oh well, you don't want to see Jones succeed. Well, bring in Odell. For all I know. It may, it may help my point about Jones not being the guy. Who knows? I don't know. We'll see. Um, but I think the Giants are going to, on a wait and see approach. I know that Odell's cleared this week. There'll be some other teams involved and then he'll start his, you know, his free agency tour, I guess. And we'll see how, how close the Giants are to signing him. Um, they want, obviously Shane said they were excited about getting Galladay back. They have Wondell Robinson and Darius Slayton. And, uh, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. And they just got Isaiah Wilson, uh, excuse me, Isaiah Hodges, um, off the Bills practice squad. So I don't know what they're going to do. You know, Shane inquiring about, about them you, is, is, is a GM doing his due diligence, finding out what the price is, what it's going to take to bring him in here and, you know, uh, what what he's seeking contractually and how far along he is in his rehab process. So just because he's talking to him, just because he's in Newark, you know, hanging out with friends, doesn't necessarily mean he's going to sign him. Doesn't necessarily mean they're not. But for those of you who think I don't want Odell Beckham Jr. because it's going to make Jones look better, that's wrong. I don't want Odell. If I don't want Odell Beckham Jr., one, it's my opinion, but two, it's because I have reservations about a guy less than a year removed from an ACL coming in and doing big things right off the bat. So. For me, I'd rather just keep the guys you got here now, develop those guys, you know, ride them out the rest of the year, you know, and go. If you decide to bring in Odell, fine. You know, fine. That's fine. I don't care. Try it out. What What's the worst that could happen? He gets injured, goes to IR, great. I'm just, all I'm saying is a culture fit. You got rid of a guy like Kadarius Tony to bring in a guy who kind of has similar issues when it comes to, I loved Odell when he was here. We'll see what happens. The other thing I want to mention is Seattle. What? What a, you know, outside of the Giants, they're another surprise team that has just, you know, they just, whatever they're doing is, is working. Geno Smith has had a renaissance kind of a year. Um, he's doing well. I mean, even though they didn't have their best game yesterday against Arizona, he still, you know, did some good things. 275 yards, two touchdowns. Geno Smith looks in command of the offense. They have everything going going for them across the board. Defensively, they are a little bit weak, but they 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 work. It works for them. It works. They make stops. They get plays. And uh, Kenneth Walker is 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 a man. That guy is a man. He's probably the, he's probably I don't know if he's going to be rookie of the year, but man, he's, he's he sure is an amazing back to watch. It seems like Seattle always has good running backs, you know, to watch when they go. Marshawn Lynch, you know, they had Chris Warren back in the day, Sean Alexander. They've had some decent backs, and now they got Kenneth Walker. Crazy, crazy, crazy to think. The other team I want to mention is Minnesota Vikings, man. Wow. I, I went into the Wednesday at with, talking with Mac on the Real Deal NFC's Roundup show that we do on Wednesdays. Um, and I said, if the Commanders beat the Vikings, the Commanders will be back in the playoff hunt. Well, they didn't really beat the Vikings, but what they did was they, I thought the Vikings at this time in their history usually collapse, you know, they usually collapse now, you know, they're fighting high and oh, they we think they're Super Bowl contenders. And next thing you know, they a game like the Commanders, they fall flat in their face. Well, Kevin O'Connell, good job for him. He, he, Pete Carroll, him, Pete Carroll, and Brian Dable are my leading candidates for coach of the year. Uh, and, and actually, excuse me, Nick Sirianni as well. You got to give it to Nick Sirianni. His team's 8 0 as well, right now. So those four coaches, um, three coaches, are pretty good. And I'm just, it just it amazes me at what uh, Kevin Connell has, Kevin O'Connell has done with that team. And really, they, they this is the nitty gritty, right? You don't you don't always win pretty, but you got to win. And uh, the last loss they have was to a Green Bay team who now is falling apart. 
who's absolutely falling apart. Um, receive, you want to call it receivers? You know, I think it's a lot more than that, but, um, they are just absolutely falling apart. And it's, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm sad to see it, but, you know, Devontae Adams is not doing much better in, in, in the Raiders land. So we have no idea what would happen there, but it's interesting to see. Minnesota is now the class of the NFC North. Um, it's just, just interesting to see. These are just casual observations I made over the summer, over the uh, Sunday watching football and, and observing. I also want to throw out the Jets there having a big statement win against the Buffalo Bills. I'm not saying the Jets have arrived, but those that's one of the wins that you can hang your hat on and say, well, now Robert Sala is locked in. He is definitely, definitely going to be Back next year, there's no doubts about it. Um, this is the biggest win they've had in their franchise in a long time against arguably the best team in 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 the conference, if not in the NFL. Um, to be honest with you, and there's going to be hiccups for the Buffalo Bills. It's hard to be up top. People are always going to try to play their best against you. They're going to always try. They see your record and they're going to be like, "All right, we're going to you want you want to be the best. You got to beat us." So those are some of the things. That I, I I like to see with the Jets. I mean, Sauce Gardner. I'm really I really love what, what Sauce Gardner is doing and is becoming. He really is becoming the heart and soul of that defense. Um, Carl Lawson coming back. He he's having a lot of pressures. He's in and around the quarterback a lot. And Jermaine Johnson's having a decent year. So good good for the Jets. Um, winning six games. That's the lo- most they've won in a long time. So if you're a Jet fan, pat yourself in the back. Uh, it's going to be a dogfight from here on out. But you're going to be in every game now. That's for sure. Uh, and, the, and the last team I wanted to talk about or that I thought was exciting on Sunday was uh, Tampa Bay. My God, I thought Tampa Bay was dead to rights with a with a minute a minute to go under a minute to go in the game, uh, getting the ball kicked back to them, no timeouts, burning them all up, getting forty five seconds, and of course you doubt Tom Brady, and that's what he does: three plays, Bing, Bing, Boom, you know, hits Kate Otten for a touchdown. Um, and I don't know if this will revitalize Tampa Bay. I have no idea. Their defense. Played pretty well, pretty admirably. Their offense still seems to be a work in progress. A lot of drops. I don't know if that's, you know, if the team's exhausted. You know, you, they've won a lot of games. I mean, since 2020, this team has been in the Super Bowl or had a, has had a long playoff run, you know. Um, so it, it, it's been a lot to handle, right? And they lost a lot of players in the offseason and, and during training camp. And so... I think they their their season now has a pulse. Um, now they're still in the fight for the South. I mean, they're tied with Atlanta right now, um, and it, it'll be interesting to see what happens with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers going forward. I just thought it was incredible to see Tom Brady pull the rabbit out of hat again uh, when I doubted him with a minute ago. I thought this game is over. Rams aren't gonna aren't gonna let them march down the field, and here they here they go. You know, Kate Otten. Um, you know, they're playing that linebacker safety role with all the DBs and this is what happens when you play DBs in the wrong position sometimes their eyesight goes you know goes and their line of progression because when you play a position you usually get lines of sight right if you're a free safety you've got basically a range of the field you're a strong safety which is now the money backer role um your line of sight is different. So I think what happened was they lost sight of Kate Otten. They thought he was going to do another round. He he went out and up and got behind the defense and, and made a big, crucial, crucial play um, that helped them get in plus territory. And then, you know, you know, obviously they had a, a holding call in the end zone against Mike Evans. And you're not going to win that. You're not going to win that if you're, especially if you're a corner. That's like the NBA when you played like Michael Jordan back in the day and you got a call and you were some scrub defender, you know, or some lesser known defender. You're not getting that call. That's Jalen Ramsey, probably 50 50. But if you're some guy who does a little tug, they're definitely going to give it to the receiver. So that's, you know, whether you like it or not, they got down there. They made the play that happened and they could have won this game earlier with Scotty. Uh, Scotty Miller, but he dropped the ball. So those are some of the casual observations I made on Sunday with with a day off of football. Um, you know, uh, we'll see what happens. Again, we'll see what happens with the Odell thing. Um, he's probably the best on the market, but you know, like I said, he also could be leveraging with the Giants, saying, "Hey, listen, Giants really want me," and the Cowboys go, "Okay, we really want you too." Or another team says, "We really want you. We'll pay you more money." So. This is negotiating tactics. I don't know how much money the Giants would want willing to part part with, and I don't know if bringing him in next year 
uh, as well does anything. I mean, the Giants have no receivers, but I thought they wanted to get a little younger. So we'll see. Again, it's an exciting time to be a Giant fan. Um, the, the NFL is, is falling into place. You're going to start to see teams slowly start to break away the, the middle of the road teams. The teams are like 500 or a game or so out of 500. Some of them are going to be making their marks. Um, teams like the Commanders are still have a pulse. So they're going to still try to fight for that wild card spot. Uh, teams like the 49ers. Are going to try to come into their own, so it's going to be a, it's going to be a, a fun, and exciting um, last eight or nine weeks of the year. Buckle up. Um, the one thing I will say, leaving before leaving, is the Giants have a couple games that 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 are that they should win. Um, but this is the NFL; we don't know what's going to happen. You got to come one and one. You got to be one and one out of those games against Houston. Should be two and zero, oh, but at the very least, be 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 one and one. Uh, coming out of those games and then headed into Dallas at around, you know, eight and two, seven and three, you know, uh, at the least. And then, and then those five, get those five remaining games will really kind of show you, uh, where they are at because they're going to be playing, uh, after those two games against Houston and Detroit, which aren't, uh, let's be honest, they're not going to be gimmies. Per se, uh, especially with the Giants' offense right now, not being able to score more than twenty-something points a game, um, you can't you can't have turnovers, you can't have mistakes. Uh, you got to play close to the vest, even with these bad teams. But you, you, these next, the, the last five games of the year, uh, or well, actually, there's six games of the year. There's nine games. There's three games I think the Giants should be favored in: Indianapolis, uh, um. Detroit and Houston in, in Houston. Those are the three games, without a doubt. Um, and then you play, then you play the Commanders twice, who have found a little life. They aren't going to be an easy out. I know we've we've owned them per se, even though the Giants lost them last year. Uh, the Giants were one and five in the division, um, but you got a lot of division games, and that'll make it up. And then you have, you know, not only that, you have two games against the Eagles. You have a big game against the Cowboys, and then you have a huge game against Minnesota in Minnesota. So it'll be fun to watch. So we'll see what happens. Um, hope you liked what you, you heard. I tried to do a little bit different than just giant related stuff. Did a little giants, little, little observations throughout the NFL. But hey, like, subscribe. Um, I'll make more videos as if, if signings come in, if, if, if Odell does, does get signed, but you'll, you'll see me, see me this Wednesday, 5.30 PM as Mac and I actually Yes, 5.30 p.m., real deal, yeah, NFC East Roundup. It'll be on this week at some point. Um, I have some obligations I have to do on Wednesday, so I'll have to talk to Mac about that. But you will still get your content regardless. So, again, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, so every time we make a video or I go live, you can tune in. Thank you so much. I'll see you soon.